I've got this dark area mixing here. If I just put a little bit of yellow into that, this transparent yellow I'm using, that will just make a dark green. And I can straight away get that on there and go around with a few dark greens. I'm not painting tree for tree or... I'm just painting shapes that I feel make this composition work. Picking out... In a way, you, in a way really, you, you shouldn't even be thinking about what the objects are. I mean, I'm, I'm just mentioning them because so you know what I'm doing. But really, you don't need to think about what the objects are. You're just looking at the shapes that pull together to make this composition. Having got those darks, work in this light area. Just pick up some white, come over to this area here, maybe drop a little bit of warmth in, so a bit of burnt sienna, and put that straight down onto the road like this. And carve out this road, this compositional shape, very, very important, leading your eye into the picture. And take a little bit of blue into that mixture just to cool it down a tiny bit because this house here, which is white, actually is a cooler colour, like that. And the shadow on the side of the house, we need to go a little bit darker. So a bit more blue and a little bit of burnt sienna into there, which makes the shadow colour on the side of the house here, like that. So, of course, it's a white house, but you're not painting the local colour, the colour you know. You're painting the relative colour, which is that blue shadow there. We might have a few of those around. And of course, where we have got that blue shadow, crucially, is on the road. So we go straight in with that now. And that's coming down here like this. Important to get these, these compositional elements in very, very early and uh, see the composition working. And you can see we're 90% of the way there already just by getting those main compositional tones and colours and shapes in which drive your eye around the picture to the focus. So, if I sh just mix a little bit of burnt sienna into that, we make these few little light bits of orange colours in the tree there, like that. And then we want to run down to some of these light colours in the uh, greener trees. So just add a little bit of this transparent yellow, cobalt blue, and just run one or two little lights like this. It's all part of the composition, this, because your lights and darks are carrying your eye around the picture. And I'm just changing a little bit. I've added a, a tiny touch of raw sienna into that green mixture. You see the difference there. That's without the raw sienna and that's with. It just changes the green a bit so that you're not painting all the time the same green. And look how the brush stroke carries your eye round. The brush strokes I'm using are part of the composition. In the background, we've got light trees, but we can't obviously use this same strong colour. It has to be really reduced down. So I simply go into this grey area of the palette, reduce it right down, perhaps add a little bit of white, to grey down that colour that I've been using. That's too, too light. I'll just put a little bit of burnt umber and ultra, ultramarine blue in. The paint on the palette is just starting to feel a little bit tacky, and that means it's ready for a spray. And this here now, you see that is dry. And the great thing about this paint is that I can now just, it's a mist spray, you're not saturating it. You just put a mist spray on like that and that rehydrates it. And now that paint, you can see, is, uh, is just like oil. So now I can blend that. Rather than having to overpaint it and remix, I can just simply take a little bit of burnt sienna, grayish burnt sienna, and just drop it in like that. Even that's maybe slightly too strong, so I take a bit off the brush, and there you see, because it's like working with oil, because that's wet paint, instead of uh, painting on top, that's blending in to this blue. We take the cobalt blue here, which we used originally into the background, just for a little bit more variation. Because I've used the spray, these paints are blending together rather than having to remix. So I had a nice variety of blues in that background 
and drops some behind these trees like that. So that, that, that gives us that nice, wet, oily uh, feel that you get when you paint with oils uh, as opposed to normally when you paint in acrylics and you end up with these sort of very staccato paint strokes which don't blend in. If this dries too far, then I always keep uh, another medium inside another one of these bottles, which is the unlocking fluid. And uh, that simply will unlock the paint even when it's fully dry. Now, as you can see, the, the painting is a long way in here. I'll take a bit of the burnt sienna and mix it into this grey area on the palette just to make some darker variations of those oranges there, like that. I drop down a brush and just put perhaps a little bit of burnt sienna, a little bit of white, so we can have some nice light on that roof. Don't make the mistake of painting it orange just because it's a roof. Let's soften that down. Really the, the trick as you'll be seeing in, in later programs on, in, in this four-part series we're doing, the trick to colouring and toning is subtlety, not bashing out this. Anyone can just bash out colours for effect, but that isn't what makes a beautiful painting very often. It's subtlety. So try to keep your colours, as you'll see we do in, the, uh, in a later programme, keep your colours nice and soft and, and blending with uh, a degree of of harmony and subtlety that is, is not trying to accent too quickly. Having got the main framework of colours and tones on here, next thing is to go back to the subject with a slightly smaller brush. Now I'm not going to work with fine detail, but just a slightly smaller brush here. It's actually a number four hog's hair. At the back here, it would be nice to see the way that road comes down properly. So take some of this grey blue that we've been using already down here. On that wall at the back here is slightly warmer. So something about there would probably be about right. When it comes down onto the road, those shadows are going to be bluer. And when it goes into the lady walking, slightly darker. So if I take my ultramarine, mix it. You see there the palette is just getting a bit dry. So I just give that a little bit of a spray like that. I don't want the paint drying on the palette. See there, it just continues to mix now like it was an oil palette. That is absolutely brilliant. I've never come across anything that does that quite as good as that ever before. So there we are. I'm just softening that lady down. I'm going to put a little bit more blue in her because I don't want her jumping out of the picture. I just want her to be the subject without her actually jumping out. And she's got a dog, so we'll just do a bit of stuff there like that. Same size brush, uh, but now working with light, take a little bit, of, not too light. Whatever you do, don't take bright white onto this. I'm just mixing a bit of white into the burnt sienna grey area here, and we'll just put a little bit of light on her there, down this side, like that. That's good enough almost. We, in fact, what, what's great to see with this paint is that because it stays wet, you can push this around. So I can do that, push that, I can push this in here like this, and even if that dries in a few minutes, I can come back and play with that little bit of detail. We'll go for some final darks and lights, and maybe just play with the road a little bit to see how this composition. This isn't a picture about detail, it's a picture about composition. We have to keep that in our mind all the time. If I take a little bit of this uh, transparent yellow, push it towards the ultramarine and burnt umber area of my palette there, I've got this very nice dark green. And if I then I can push that onto that, strengthen that green, put these nice trees here. Notice I don't get too fiddly, I just keep the brush strokes moving and the reason for that this needs a little spray so I don't want just give that a little spray I don't want these to go on you know separate I want them to blend in a little bit to what's underneath so these brush strokes go on like that what we mustn't make the mistake is using the same dark in this background area. It might even be better not to even put any more dark in that background area. If, for example, we take a little bit more of that uh, transparent yellow, just mix it in there just to grate down a bit like that. That's a bit too strong. It's got to be less strong than this. Otherwise, it's, it's relatively going to uh, 
jump out of the picture and we don't want it. It should be in the background this, so just reduce it down like that.